Rapid Engineering's introduction of the touchscreen remote for the Infinity Pro and ICS4 DDC control platforms. The first thing we're going to talk about is backward compatibility. So you can't simply take a new touchscreen and plug it into a unit that currently has a keypad because the graphics are kept on the controller and a controller can only have one type of graphic on it. So you actually have to reprogram your controller to be able to support a touchscreen. Our service department will be happy to help you with that. The other difference is in the wiring. The keypad runs on 12 volts DC, whereas the new touchscreen is going to run on 24 volts AC. So that molded plug that you use to plug directly into the controller with your keypad isn't going to work because that access is a 12 volt jack. Fortunately, the controller itself runs on 24 volts AC, so you can use the same power supply to power both the touchscreen and the controller. If we take a look at the back plate, the wiring is very simple. We have 24 volt hookup here. We've got our RNET here, which is the communications between the touchscreen and the controller, plus to plus, minus to minus on either end. And then we have a spot for an optional thermistor here. The touchscreen has its own built-in temperature and humidity sensor, but if you wanted to run another sensor maybe to a different space, you could wire it in here. And with a couple changes in settings on the touchscreen, it would use that as its room temperature instead. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Once you're wired up, the touchscreen clicks into its back plate, and that back plate mounts really well on a 6x6 junction box, or it can be mounted on the wall just like a thermostat. Really any flat surface will work just fine. And once we're in, we come up on the home screen, which has kind of all of our vital information. We've got some icons that show our operating mode. So when the fan is on, this will illuminate. When the cooling is on, this will illuminate. And when the heating's on, this icon will illuminate. You can see our schedule says we're in occupied mode right now. We also have our current room temperature, our operating mode, and our set points. All the screens can be accessed through the menu. And before I start looking at screens, I'll point out these icons in the upper left. We have our home button, our back button, and our alarm button. Home takes us back to that home screen. The back button takes us to the previous screen, to whatever we were on. And then the alarm screen we'll talk about in a little bit. So we're gonna start with configuration. So this screen is laid out very much like your touchpad. Anything that has a frame around it is something that you can edit by clicking on it. So for instance, I could click here and change my schedule source. And like I said, all your options are gonna be exactly the same as they are on your keypad. The only difference is that for schedule source, on the keypad, keypad and web control were two different options. Because the touchscreen works really nicely with web control, those two are actually the same option, and a change in the keypad affects web control, and a change in web control affects the keypad. Next, we're gonna look at mode. This is how we change our operating mode. So I'm gonna go ahead and put us in auto and start the unit up. And so now you can see the fan is on because this icon is illuminated. If I then go to the status screen, I can look at all the live values for this unit you can see we don't have frames, so these aren't editable. Any screen that has more on it than will fit in the frame of the touchscreen has a scroll bar, which you can move by clicking the up and down arrow keys, or you can just grab the scroll bar and drag it up and down. The settings screen has more frames, which means these are values we can change. So if I wanted to change the set point, you just click on it, type in a new number, and click Done. Again, this screen will be set, set up just like it is on your keypad. Next, we're going to take a look at the calibration screen. This is where we can make changes to our analog values. So, for instance, I have this outside air temperature set to have an offset of minus four degrees, meaning that my sensor is reading four degrees higher than what reality is. So I'm gonna offset it by negative four. 
to change the value, you can simply come in and type in a new value. Or to clear the offset, enter zero. We also have this manual override screen, which is where we can force a couple of values that are useful for troubleshooting. So we can change our zone temperature and we can change our burner modulation. So if we wanted to force high fire, we could use this. Or if we wanted to check operation based on zone temp, we could change it here as well. So to use this, you set the lock to yes and then put in the value you want. Right now I'm forcing the zone temp to 50 degrees, which we can see here. And you can see because we're below our heating set point, my burner's turned on. If I go back and change the zone temp to a value that's above my cooling set point, my burner will turn off and my cooling will turn on. To turn off the lock, set this value to no. Next, we're gonna look at schedules, which is one of the most powerful parts of this touchscreen. Before we get into the in-depth schedules, if you don't wanna mess around with schedules, you can always go to 24 seven run and force this to on, which will mean that the schedules will be ignored and the unit will be in occupied mode 24 hours a day, seven days a week. If you do wanna have an occupied and unoccupied schedule, you can go to schedules and it's gonna bring up a calendar. And these green symbols are telling us that we have occupied times set up in the schedule for all of these dates. Now this calendar view is kind of small, so normally I go to the week view. And you can see that we're occupied between 7 a.m. and 6 p.m. five days a week. If you wanna look at a day in depth, you can click on the word for the day. And you can see again, my Friday schedule is shown here and then I have an effective schedule from 7 until 6. What this effective schedule is trying to tell me is that I can add different schedules together to get an effective schedule. So since I only have one schedule right now this isn't telling me a whole lot it's exactly the same as the occupied schedule. But where this is useful is if we want to set a holiday schedule. So say I wanted to make this day a holiday. I could do that by adding a new schedule and I can give it a name. I'm gonna make it an off schedule to make it unoccupied. I'm gonna use a dated schedule, which means I'm gonna give it a date. And you can actually set these up to repeat daily, monthly, and yearly. I'm just gonna leave it as none for now. And if I click save, you can see now my effective schedule is the standard schedule plus the holiday schedule resulting in this schedule. And you can see I didn't do this quite right because my holiday schedule is from eight to five, whereas my normal occupied schedule is from seven until six. So I have these little occupied ends on this schedule, which I don't want. So in order to fix that, Simply click on the schedule that you want to edit and change the values. And now you can see I've effectively canceled out the normal occupied period with this holiday schedule resulting in an unoccupied effective schedule. And if I go to my home screen, I'm now shown as unoccupied. Next, we're gonna look at the setup screen, which is the setup for the touchscreen itself, not for your unit. Module setup is where you can go to set your time and date, although normally this gets its time from the controller, and that's usually a pretty good time. Login is where you can log in as a technician with higher permissions to be able to access other screens. And then touchscreen setup is where we can do some maintenance on the touchscreen. So about tells us what software numbers we're currently on. Tech support may ask you for this if you call in. Inactivity timeout is like a screensaver, so you can set how long it takes without touching any buttons for this to switch to its standby screen. 
which looks a lot like the home screen but doesn't have any buttons on it and all you have to do is tap it to bring it back to life. Sensor setup is where we pick between the internal sensor for the touchscreen and that remote thermistor that I showed you on the back plane. So if I switch the remote, you can see I get an open circuit value for the thermistor. And if I switch back to the internal, I'm reading a 77 degree, 48% relative room. The key click and the alarm is merely controlling sounds. So whether you want to hear sounds when you tap keys here, and if you want to hear alarms here. Reload firmware is best to avoid. That's how you load new firmware onto the touchscreen. If you don't do this right, you can junk your touchscreen, so it'll give you a warning. And so normally you don't want to do that. Language, English is the only option. Calibrate touch panel allows you to calibrate the touch sensitivity of your touchscreen. So if you find that when you're trying to hit buttons, it's activating other parts of the screen rather than the part you're touching, you can do this calibrate. It'll give you a couple bullseyes in the corners and it'll recalibrate itself. Next, we're gonna look at trends. Trends is the other really nice thing about this touchscreen. So the touchscreen is always logging historical data and you can actually access that data and look at it in, in a trend using this trend selector. And so we have a couple different options available. And so I'm gonna look at a fan on trend. That's a digital, so I'll check digital. And then I'm also gonna take a look at zone temp. It's gonna ask me what times I wanna look at. So I'm just gonna look at today's time. And you can also set the axis limits. So I'll go ahead and pick those and then click display trends. And so you can see the orange is my fan on and you can see that's been turning on and off as we've been doing the demonstration. And then we can see our zone temp changing over time. So trends can be a really powerful tool when you're troubleshooting and trying to see what happened with your unit, try to solve problems. Okay, last thing we're gonna take a look at is our alarm screen. So in order for this to work, I'm going to force running because otherwise I won't get alarms. So right now you can see I don't have any active alarms because we're grayed out here. When alarms come in, your little exclamation point will turn red up here. Right now, since I don't have any, I can look at what's been manually cleared. And this will tell me when an alarm came in and then when it got manually cleared. If an alarm cleared itself, that is an alarm condition came in and then was resolved in the equipment. So for instance, if you got a dirty filter alarm and you change your filters, that would show up in the return to normal screen. So again, it will show when the alarm came in and then when it cleared. So I just had an alarm come in, that's why this is red. So if I click that, it brings up what my current active alarms are and you can see I'm getting a dirty filter alarm. So I'm gonna clear that and it'll take a minute to clear. Once it clears, this red will go away like that and I can get into manually cleared and see that I just cleared it. So again, just like the trends, the touchscreen will keep historical data on your alarms and you can take a look back and see all the alarms that you've gotten and how they were cleared, whether they were cleared manually by using this clear active or if they returned to normal on their own. All right, that wraps up this tutorial. Thanks for joining us for this demonstration of the touchscreen remote for Rapid Engineering DDC controllers.